So uh, next speaker is um, Dirk Pensky for Festo, and as anticipated, they will talk about uh, uh, so the bionics industry and the question of robots at Festo. But you may know that Festo is doing some very cool things in robotics. So I let the floor to Dirk. Yes, thank me. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, you can hear me and you can see my slides. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. very good. Thank you. So it's a pleasure for me to show you some of our uh, bionics and industrial and ed educational robot projects. Um, I just have chosen some of the projects. Uh, there's no time to show you all the projects. Um, I will start with a short introduction into the Festo Corporation and also our bionics projects. And um, then I will switch over to the industrial and educational robots. And at the end, I will give you an outlook on what we will work in the near future. Uh, the Festo Corporation uh, is an automation technology and didactics company. We have a turnover in 2012 of about 2.24 billion euros. We are located in uh, 59 countries and have more than 240 40 locations worldwide. We have a lot of innovative development going on here, 2,900 patents globally and about 100 innovations per year. And our R&D effort is about 7% of sales. Um, okay, some other things are stated here also. You see in the upper left corner on the slide, this is our headquarter in Berkheim. And the three buildings there, um, yeah, around the uh, the central place is our technology center where we have uh, a couple of hundred engineers uh, working on uh, on the future of factory and process automation. And of course, we have a few guys there sitting there uh, working on robotics. And then with the next slides, I will show you what they have done also. And here is one more slide to our uh, corporation uh, target. Um, yeah, what you see here, we have a lot of customers coming from different areas from automotive up to biotech and farmer and process automation. Our main products are in pneumatics, electrics, sensors and controls. And we also offer a lot of services regarding logistics, commissioning, operation and maintenance. Okay, so far to this. Uh, the first project I want to show you is uh, the SmartBird, and Nathan is there just to start the first video, right on time, <laughs> very good. So this is our SmartBird project uh, coming out uh, last year at the Hanover Fair. I do not know if you know that at the Hanover Fair, one of the largest industrial fairs in the world, we usually show a couple of projects from our bionic learning network. And this bionic learning network deals uh, with a lot of different projects and uh, this network is um, yeah, organized by Festo and there are a lot of universities and researchers from all over the world uh, working on uh, innovative uh, bionic projects and some of those are in the area of robotics and here you see uh, the smart bird flying around our technology center in, in Berkheim and from Far away, it seems like there's a bird flying, but in reality, it's really a, a small, manually controlled robot. And with the next video, I can show you a little bit how this is done. Uh, there's an animation that shows uh, how this uh, smart bird was designed and how how it's controlled and the mechanisms inside. Um, of course, it's a lightweight uh, yeah, bird with a, a weight of about 450 grams. And we have a lot of uh, functions integrated into it. And uh, we need a lot of different movements here uh, to perform this um, autonomous flight yeah, without any other things uh, that you need to do this. You know? and so only because of uh, the beat of the wings, uh, this bird can fly. You know? And so we need a really lightweight structure here. This smart bird has a wingspan of about two meters and a torso length of about one meter. So uh, you see it must be very light. 
Okay, why do we do this? Uh, there's another example on the next slide here. You see the Bion Bionicopter. Yeah, it's like a helicopter. Yeah, it comes from the word helicopter, but it's a Bionicopter. And why is it uh, like a helicopter? You see in the next video, uh, the so-called dragonfly is the only bird. Now uh, there are some other birds, like the colibri bird. I do not know if you know this uh, colibri bird also. Uh, this dragonfly here is able to perform a flight uh, for example, standing or flying in its position and rotating in its position and uh, flying backwards. So it's like a helicopter, but we call it now here a bionicopter because this is also a very lightweight structure. Um, the beat frequency of this bionicopter here is about 15 to 20 hertz. You know? And we have a wingspan of about 60 centimeters with this bird here and a body length of about 44 centimeters. Now here you can see it flying inside of our technology, uh, technology center. And the weight of this bird or you know, this bionicopter is about 175 grams. We have a lot of uh, mechanics inside and uh, uh, within the, the next video you will see how it is realized. Um, and here it comes. So it can move in any direction or flying uh, fly in any direction it can stand still and for this uh, we need um, yeah this very complex flight model and we have eight servo motors inside of this system and uh, you see uh, the different gear wheels and the different mechanisms how to drive the wings here and in, in total, we have 13 degrees of freedoms because um, each wing can also change its twist and uh, it twist angel. And uh, like this here, you can see we can rotate the wing. And with this movement or movability of the wings, so we can uh, move in or fly in any direction and also stand in the position. Okay, why do we do this? Of course, we, we have a high interest in lightweight structures on the one hand. On the other hand, we need a lot of uh, mechanics uh, uh, knowledge to, uh, to create our industrial projects. And uh, the next project I want to show you is a little bit more going into the industrial field because here we have the so-called ExoHand and the next video shows how it is operated. Um, it's an exoskeleton hand that you can wear on your real hand on the one hand, yeah, and on the other hand, the robot can can uh, uh, grasp and move this hand. So what you can do here is uh, to realize a remote controlled hand with a uh, haptical feedback. That means, of course, you know that the, that uh, the user can feel. Um, uh, the the grasping of, of uh, the robot hand. Uh, in this case here, you see the real robot is grasping the blue object here, and of course, at the end, it cannot close the fingers anymore, and you feel this in your own uh, exo hand. So, it, this is very good for teleoperating on the one hand, and we have some more interesting. Uh, case studies in the animation in the next video. And there you can see that you can also use it, for example, to uh, control your hand um, using your brain without any direct connection um, to, to the hand. Yeah. This also shows you the movability of the fingers. So we have very small pneumatic cylinders here that can be controlled um, yeah, in the position. And of course, uh, the robot can move the hand. And this is a six axis robot, the Mitsubishi Electric that we use there. And here you can see that you can also use this exoskeleton hand for uh, getting more power in your in your fingers um, in case uh, you're injured or you're a very old man, for example, then you need more force to to 
to grasp a workpiece or something like that, then you can use this exoskeleton hand to amplify your um, your force in the hand. Okay, those are studies coming up or, or were fulfilled by our uh, bionic learning network. Those by, uh, usually the projects, um, the, the outcome of those projects are no new products. They are, um, like studies in the automotive uh, area or sector, yeah, we just want to um, see what is achievable. Yeah, if you if you spend a lot of time and of course a lot of money to fulfill th those uh, projects or tasks here, uh, then you can see okay what is the outcome of the different things um, that we have in mind here and. And there's one example uh, where uh, bionic learning uh, network projects uh, was um, uh, has led to one of uh, our new projects here. Um, products here that is the bionic handling system. I think you know this. Um, it's an elephant trunk like um, manipulator and. It's a little bit different to the pneumatic muzzle that uh, Samira just showed you because this one here is driven by different bellows. This manipulator, you see there are nine different bellows ordered in three sections and you can control the pressure in each of the nine bellows here to move the bionic handling assistant uh, to a certain position. At this time, we are working working on a complete control of this um, manipulator uh, because, as, as you can mention um, or imagine here, it is not that simple to control this with a high accuracy. We have some feedback uh, regarding the position because at the outline here of the um, bionic handling assistant on each bellow, there's a, a, a string. Um, that gives you information about the uh, length of the single uh, bellow and with this value you can um, determine the absolute position of the manipulator at the end effector here. What you see also here is that we use the so-called fin gripper mechanism to grasp um, uh, different structures, um, objects with different structures and how this works, we can also see in the animation of this. I think we got it also in one of the videos. Yes, there should be the animation. So this is an animation of this bionic handling assistant. And you see that we have those nine bellows in three segments. And each bellow, the pressure, the air pressure can be controlled. And the gripper, that is the so-called fin gripper, it's also a bionic uh, project from the past. And here you see if you pump air inside of those bellows here, yeah, um, they're extruded. And then you can also create um, different movements if you use uh, different uh, air pressures in the different bellows. And those are the the uh, extensions or each extension measurement systems here for each bellow. And at the gripper, we also have some uh, bellows here to get a rotation uh, and a twist of this gripper. And also here we have some sensors to, to get the uh, positioning information. Okay, and at this time uh, we are working together with, uh, with uh, some of our partners uh, to get this a bionic handling assistant uh, in the market. We have uh, some partners here in the, um, of course, uh, food industry. Um, and we're working on improvements. For example, you need a, a lot of um, uh, safety and um, yeah, cycle time. Uh, that you know, can fulfill with this system. And uh, so it was an outcome of one of the bionic learning projects, uh, network projects, and now we're uh, forcing to get this into the market as a product. Um, okay, this tripod here, I do not know if you have ever seen this. Uh, we have a video of this too. Um, this is a very simple uh, kinematic, we have only three electrical axes here and with this 
or with those uh, electrical axes, we are able to create this pick and place some mechanism. Of course, you know other flex picker systems, for example, by ABB or others, but this one here is much more simpler to to, to control in our compare uh, in our mind, and uh, we have different applications uh, that you can fulfill with this very fast picking and placing uh, manipulator. And uh, because you have only three identical electrical axes, it is very fast to control, and we can perform up to 100 picks per per minute with this, uh, with a high accuracy. Uh, and you can also use it for measurement uh, tasks and other things here, of course. Okay, this is one of our uh, robotics uh, robotics products for the industry. Now let's go over to the uh, educational side here. We have the so-called modular production system. Uh, this is a learning system for factory automation. And as you can see in the slide, we have different so-called MPS stations here that we can use for the uh, learning in uh, PLC programming and factory automation fundamentals. There are different processes uh, reflected in those different stations. And one of the stations is also a robotic station. Um, that means we have here an industrial robot mounted on top of this a very simple uh, station here. Uh, the only task in this single station is to uh, to find out that there is a workpiece uh, coming over the slide here on the left side, and then to detect this workpiece, uh, grasp the workpiece, and of course uh, make some measurement with an integrated sensor, and then just uh, put it down somewhere else. In the right side, you see on the right side of the slide, you see that you can uh, put another station. Uh, directly to this uh, robot station and with this you have some more things to be done uh, and uh, one of the videos or the next video will show uh, the simulation of this uh, MPS robot assembly station and here you can see what is the task of the students to work with this robotics training work cell that is to check if there's a workpiece and, and then to um, grasp it, put it in the so-called assembly module and start with the assembly process, um, yeah, make some orientation um, displacement here of the workpiece and uh, then start to uh, assembly the workpiece. Um, you see that we also offer the uh, close to reality simulation of those work cells because usually uh, the schools or the universities do not have the time or the money to uh, to um, integrate more than a couple of those um, training work cells in their departments. So usually they work with the simulation if they have a lot of students. And afterwards, you can download the programs that you have for, um, developed for the simulated robot into the real robot controller. And of course, you need to reteach some positions. And afterwards, you can just uh, execute the program that you have developed for the um, simulated robot. OK. Um, of course, we have some other uh, robotics training cells here for the uh, vision system based uh, um, movements and also the um, yeah, other training methods can be fulfilled with this robot vision cell. And the last thing I want to show you is uh, the new Robotino system that we have um, launched just one month ago. This is a mobile robotic system that can be used for research as well as for education. And uh, with this Robotino system, you see here two of uh, the different versions. Um, you are able to create your own application based on this you know, standardized platform. We have a lot of interfaces, uh, as you can see um, here on top of uh, the so-called uh, chassis. You can see. Your conference is scheduled to end in two minutes. OK, so we have to hurry up a little bit. <laughs> no problem. Um, so we have um, a standardized platform with a lot of interfaces, a lot of open source software components that you can use you to integrate your own um, hardware systems, software-based algorithms, and so on. And this, um, yeah, um, 
shows just the flexibility in the in the hardware that you can uh, build up um, an assembly tower on top of this moving platform to integrate, for example, laser scanners, manipulators, grippers, and so on. And at the end, of course, we are able to combine the two worlds that I've shown you just in the slides before. Uh, we are able to connect the Robotino to their uh, MPS, modular production system stations, to, for example, fulfill an autonomous uh, um, transportation of work pieces and other components. Yes. Now, coming to my conclusion, uh, what we are working on right now in Germany, I do not know if you know this, in, in other countries, we talk about the so-called industrial revolution, about the fourth uh, industrial revolution. Here you see what we understand as first, second, and third industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution um, um, will be very, yeah, will be getting significant use of uh, uh, internet and uh, Internet of Things and um, autonomous uh, components within the production. Um, and it is shown here in the picture that you can see a robot and other devices communicating. Your conference is now over. Goodbye. Okay, but we can still go on or? <laughs> Okay, so we just uh, heard a very nice uh, um, talk from Dirk Pensky from Festo. Uh, I'm just leaving now to share the, the, his, uh, the long, this short description of uh, his long uh, CVs. Um, I, 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 see, I think that if you think to the, um, to the bionic bird, robotics bird, uh, you see that uh, when there are many cool opportunities and also in the industrial application and there are companies looking at it.